Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder aboard a ship that is purely made out of Jackie Fisher's most wild streams. A ship that is incomparable. That's the reason why I didn't make a ship review out of it. If you want me to do so, let me know in the comment section. Then I try to come up with certain comparisons. The closest would be the Graf Spee, but turned to 12, not 11. And a ship that is the mouse of the seas because it's absolutely imbalanceable. A ship, to quote your Jeremy Clarkson, you have to be bunkers to play and that's the reason why you should. And a ship that the end of the day really earns the name HMS Glorious. Later on, Drakinifel will honor us with a five minute guide from 2018 about the historical career of the ship. He just gave me permission to use the sound line in my video. And again, thank you very much, sir, to have the honor to allow me to do this. And um, I also want to really point out one thing this is a ship that has 15 inch guns at a battle rating of 5.7. Those are the same guns, quite literally, as of the HMS Vanguard, the last British battleship ever built. And it's half the far power, basically, than the HMS Hood, the mighty Hood. However, I could really dive deep into talking about the horrible turning capabilities, the very thin armor, um, the lack of AA, the secondaries, the 40 torpedoes that you have, and the fact that you only have four main battery guns that have still 30 second reload and have a turret rotation speed of 2 degrees per second, which is painfully slow. So it takes like one and a half minutes to just turn the turrets from one side to the other. But I think the footage speaks for itself. In many games you just constantly miss the targets and in other games you just absolutely ruffle stump them. There is one thing that I really have to point out before we go to the five minute guide and that is that I'd wish the ship has HE because that would be more appropriate and more useful, more efficient versus the targets that you face, especially Moffats, because they are your main food. So without further ado, let's roll in Drakinifel. Glorious was laid down on the 1st of May 1915, launched about a year later and completed six months after that. Keeping up with the official claim of being a large light cruiser, and after most of the first cruiser squadron was sunk at the Battle of Jutland, this first cruiser squadron was reformed using Courageous and Glorious. After a number of failed attempts to catch German cruisers, the Second Battle of Heligoland Bight began as four light German cruisers, eight destroyers, three divisions of minesweepers, eight trawlers full of cork, and two normal trawlers were spotted silhouetted by the rising sun. A British force opened fire, and the Germans responded by laying a smokescreen, which meant that the British soon lost track of most of the smaller ships and concentrated their fire on the light cruisers. Soon after the start of the engagement, the left-hand gun in Glorious's forward turret was wrecked when a shell detonated inside the gun barrel, which required five days of repairs to fix the damage caused by both that and her own muzzle blast. In common with the rest of the Grand Fleet, Glorious received flying off platforms on top of her turrets in 1918, and later that year, while she was anchored alongside the battleship Royal Oak, a Force 10 squall dragged a seaplane carrier up against both ships. Although the capital ship suffered minor damage, the seaplane carrier was holed by the collision and sank five hours later, albeit without any loss of life. The ship was then present at the surrender of the German high seas fleet and almost immediately placed in reserve to serve as a turret drill ship. Three years later, the Washington Naval Treaty allowed for up to 66,000 tons of existing ship to be converted into aircraft carriers, and Glorious, with its large hull and high speed, made an ideal candidate. Conversion begun in 1924 and completed in 1950. Her 15-inch turrets were then placed in storage and later reused in HMS Vanguard. A two-story hangar was built on top of the hull, with the upper deck level opening onto a short flight deck. The lower flying off deck improved launch and recovery until the heavier fighters of the 1930s made it obsolete. 
The ship also had a dual-purpose armament of 16 4.7 quick-firing guns mounted in single mounts, later accompanied by three octuple two-pounder pom-poms and a single 50 caliber AA machine gun. Glorious could carry up to 48 aircraft internally and at various points operated the Blackburn Dart, Blackburn Rippon, Blackburn Baffin and Fairy Swordfish Torpedo Bombers, Fairy 3F and Fairy Seal Reconnaissance Planes, Fairy Flycatcher, Hawker Nimrod, Hawker Osprey, and finally Gloucester Sea Gladiator fighters. She served briefly with the Mediterranean Fleet when the Second World War broke out. In October 1999, she moved to the Indian Ocean, where she became part of the force hunting for Admiral Grosh Bay unsuccessfully, and was then recalled to the Home Fleet in April 1940 to provide cover for the British landings in Norway. RAF Gloucester Gladiators, as well as Fleet Air Arm Blackburn Skewers and Sea Gladiators, were embarked. The Glorious then accompanied the Ark Royal, attacking targets in and around Trondheim, and later the task force would come under heavy attack by the Luftwaffe in response and was withdrawn. But she was soon back with six supermarine walrus amphibious flying boats, 18 Hawker Hurricanes, and her own air group. But soon after landing these craft, the British forces were ordered to be withdrawn. Ten RAF gladiators, as well as a number of hurricanes, were flown on board after the pilots discovered that by putting a 7 kilo sandbag in the rear of the hurricane, they could apply full brakes on landing, which allowed them to land on the carrier without the need for a tail hook. Whilst considering the following events, it's important to bear in mind that her captain at this point had spent most of his life in submarines and had only been the executive officer on Courageous for 10 months. That was the sum total of his carrier experience. On her way back through the Norwegian Sea, the funnel smoke from Glorious and her two escorts, the Acasta and Ardent, was spotted by the German battleships Scharnhorst and Gneisenau. The British spotted funnel smoke shortly after 4 o'clock, and Ardent was dispatched to investigate. However, Glorious didn't alter her course or increase speed, with no combat air patrol being flown, no aircraft ready for, on the deck for quick takeoff, and no lookout in her crow's nest. However, action stations were sounded and five swordfish were belatedly brought, brought up to the deck in readiness for takeoff. Ardent quickly realised what the problem was and opened fire, scoring a single hit with her 4.7 inch guns on the Scharnhorst, but was hit several times by the German secondary battery and sunk. Scharnhorst then switched her fire to Glorious and scored a hit on her third salvo at a fairly long range of 26,000 yards, which hit the forward flight deck burst in the upper hangar and started a large fire. This destroyed two of the swordfish preparing for flight and the massive hole in the flight deck meant that no other aircraft could take off. Splinters from this shell penetrated a boiler and caused a temporary drop in steam pressure whilst a second shell hit pretty much wiped out everybody who was on the bridge. At this point Ardent smokescreen became fairly effective and for about half an hour the Germans ceased fire on the Glorious. However, as the wind dissipated the smoke, Glorious was hit again in the centre engine room, which caused her to lose speed, commence a slow circle to port, and develop a list to starboard. The Germans would then close to within 16,000 yards and continue fire until the ship sank at about 10 past 6 in the evening with 43 survivors. As the Germans closed the range on Glorious, the Acasta broke through her own smoke screen and fired two volleys of torpedoes at the Scharnhorst. One of these hit next to the rear turret and badly damaged the German ship. She also managed to score a single 4.7 inch gun hit on the Scharnhorst like the Ardent, but was riddled by German gunfire and sank about 10 minutes after Glorious. The survivors estimated that perhaps 900 men abandoned Glorious, but the Germans for whatever reason chose not to pick up survivors this time. In total, this battle resulted in 1,207 men killed or missing from Glorious, 160 from Acasta, and 152 from Ardent, for a total of 1,519 lives lost. So here we are at the near end of the video, and I hope that this footage gave you a good impression of what the ship can do, how much fun and also frustration I had at the same time with this ship. It is really a ship that is glorious in its design uh, it was probably designed by a six-year-old i don't know however i think you either absolutely love or absolutely hate it i don't really think there is something in between and again thank you very much Fell, for talking us through the historical career of the ship again let me know if you want to see an actual ship review of this ship because um, I have enough footage and um, I also have nothing against playing it again 
and there are more ships like these to come in the British tech tree in the long run. And that's it for me today. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a like, give it a subscribe if you want to see more. And for you, it's just a couple of clicks. For me, it means the world. And as usual, we will see each other on the battlefields, in the skies and on the waves of War Thunder.